Uh, good morning to everybody. I would like first of all to thank all the, the SIRE organization for this marvelous event, uh, especially Barbara and, and Ben. Ben is a, an old friend of mine, I would say, because we met in 2007, and uh, I'm very happy to see that what discussed uh, in, a, in a lunch we were remembering a few minutes ago has become true somehow, because I, I called him a visionary in, in the time, and now instead uh, this has transformed in, in a reality, the, the challenge. Uh, as you can imagine, I am in the challenge uh, since then, uh, even if the, the work has been separated sometimes uh, uh, from SIAC, because SIAC is very far from, from Rome. But anyway, the ideas that uh, we have been sharing that day has influenced very much my work and also the, the project uh, that I've been uh, discussing today. But before discussing that, let's see some key points because the, uh, you know, I'm teaching at university and professors always want to give lectures. And so let me, forgive me for that, but I have to, to frame somehow the, the scientific uh, framework in which we, are, we have been moving, we are moving today. So, uh, as you see, we have, uh, um, uh, I, have to, I want to stress what is the importance of the work that SIAC is going, not only SIAC, but SIAC is going to, has been uh, developing, is going to develop in the next years. Uh, the documentation, it's not only documentation, you know, we have uh, uh, a scientific ground behind that allows us to understand completely what is the importance of these new, what I call, massive data capturing systems. Um, there is a similarity to other uh, research and scientific disciplines like physics and biology in which the, the data capturing is essential for the uh, progress of, of knowledge. In, for, for example, you know the, um, the LHC in, uh, in Geneva that has discovered the Higgs boson. It's, uh, um, a machine that acquires data, and these data are shared immediately among all the researchers all around the world. There is a big and a huge cooperative work. So we have to uh, build a capacity of doing the same somehow in our different sectors. And this is not quite easy, it's not quite smooth, because everybody is very jealous of the data and so on. The work that SIRC is doing, so it's very, very important because the, the idea of the data sharing is something that is uh, too important to be ignored, simply ignored. So uh, the framework is then the, the scientific method. I don't want to bore you too much on that. But anyway, architecture and archaeology, all the, the, the artifacts are somehow our phenomena on which we, we develop our research. And survey is the, the, the system, the method we have to transform the quality of the objects in quantity. And this is the, the main means through which we, have, we can acquire knowledge and build knowledge on, the, on these objects. The scientific uh, uh, method approach is the big difference in uh, massive uh, data capturing systems in, in comparison with the past. Because during the past, we still had the capacity and the ability in taking points. You see there, there are a uh, small point cloud, uh, the, the green one, there are this, the, the, uh, the river fountain in Rome, there are more or less 300 uh, points. The other one is the, the Merida site, so the difference is not in the points, of course. They're also the only geometrical uh, triplets of coordinates. But the, um, the sh we, are, we have been able to shift from hundreds to millions. It means that all the data we can capture through these systems as are more and more effective, are more and more uh, huge to um, to, to, to research, to understand what is the intimate, what the profound knowledge I was saying before, uh, quoting the, the chart, that is the, our objective. So uh, all the acquisition system is basically uh, 
more objective than the past because we just acquire the data and then after we have acquired the data we have the possibility of choosing, selecting and interpreting, I say, uh, what is significant and what is not significant. So there is a drawback actually because this great power has the problem of what has been called by Umberto Eco, this is an Italian philosopher, uh, at the beginning of March, uh, of beginning of September, sorry, uh, the problem of the signal and the noise is something we are experimenting in the, in the internet by now because we have so many information, too much information, it's difficult to discriminate what is significant, what is meaningful, and what is not meaningful. And the same is it's going to happen also for point clouds. And it, it still happens some point clouds because as you see in, in, in the slide, we have millions of points. From these millions of points, we have to extract the information we need and we recognize as significant. So the data have not only to be stored, preserved, acquired and so on, but they, it has to be preserved also the way uh, through which uh, from this data can be extracted information. Uh, Umberto Eco says this, there are some privileged places to do that. One is the university, but I think in a wider sense that also SIAR could be one of these and the other organizations all around the world that will be uh, keen on, on, uh, on working on that. It means that the information uh, should be stored but should be preserved also the capacity and the, the skill to uh, extract information from that. This is the framework that uh, the uh, Athena project, in which Athena project has been developing. Just a few numbers, uh, more, a little bit less than two million euros was the, the budget. Uh, four years, the, the, the project has been has closed on uh, January of this year. And these are the partners. As you see, SIRC is, is one of the associates. Uh, it's a, a, a kind of a legal framework in which the, the call was moving. It, 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 all the organization and the partners had to be uh, installed in, uh, in Europe, so an American organization could be not uh, a, a full partner of that. But anyway, uh, SIARC uh, gave a great contribution, is giving a great contribution because we are going to uh, preserve all the clouds we have acquired of these six uh, uh, sites all around the Mediterranean basin. And uh, as a general objective, the Athena project had not also the documentation. You know, the documentation is not an objective in itself, it's a means for something else. In this case, the, mean, uh, the, the objective uh, of the project was to design management plans, more effective management plans for sites. That's why the sites that we've been choosing are all UNESCO sites, where they are already listed in the UNESCO the World Heritage list. And uh, um, so we had to confront somehow ourselves also with all the, the rules, you know, when you want to ask for uh, uh, for a site to become a UNESCO site, there are many and many problems, many and many papers to fill and so on. So we had to uh, comply somehow and develop a bottom-up strategy uh, to um, better uh, address all the rules that comes from, from uh, top down, from the UNESCO right to the site, uh, just to merge these, uh, these rules with the needs that instead come bottom up from the site. So this is, was, was the, the general strategy. What are the Athena sites? We'll show three of them now. Today, one is Merida, is, is in Spain. It's a very interesting site because it's the only site, I think, in Europe in which you have a theater and amphitheater built together. Together it means at the same time, it's a unique design. And uh, um, is uh, now inside the city, so it's like an island. Uh, all around it's all built. And uh, uh, this unique complex, uh, uh, has been studied very much also because Merida is a, is a little town uh, uh, not far from the Portuguese border in Spain and uh, has only the archaeological site. So for the management plant was perfect because 
the economy, the, the, the society, everything turns around the, the archaeological site. It's the, the most important mean for social cohesion, for economics, and so on. Uh, you see the difference between uh, points and point clouds. This is what I was saying before. The, the, the blue ones were the topographic points. These is, are the, uh, the, the scans put all together. You know how many information more we can get from this, but you know how many noise we have in comparison with the signal. Uh, the other two sites I'll show you today are located in Jordan. And we are very fond, I think, of, I, I say, of these two sites, because not only because they are very famous, one is uh, Petra, that's very well known, I think, uh, but also because Jordan, uh, also for political and geopolitical reasons now, it's uh, an island again, uh, because all around we have war and uh, riots and so on. And, uh, uh, the possibility of, of intervening in this, in this country with such uh, massive impact, I would say also because the, the leader of the project was the DOA, that is a uh, uh, Jordanian Department of Antiquities of Jordan, uh, put also uh, uh, the, this country in the, pos in the condition of being a sort of uh, uh, of port, of pole, of starting a core of a documentation pole in that area. We uh, worked a lot in capacity building, training, and so on uh, of the staff there, just to allow um, a structure to become autonomous somehow from uh, the expertise uh, coming from Europe or the USA. And this is, I think, a novelty because they. Uh, in that kind of, in, the, in that part of the world, there is also always the sensation of uh, colonialism from uh, from other, from the northern shore of the Mediterranean and from uh, from the U.S. So uh, we have been working on both sides: documentation from one side, the capacity building on the other, and uh, um, increase of awareness both in the people working on the sites and the population there. We made uh, uh, organize great, uh, for example, um, events in the other sites uh, that we are going, the other site we are going to see today, that is Jarash, in which in the theater we, uh, the DOA organized an event for children. About 2,000 children were in the theater, and they somehow repossessed the, the theater for themselves with the, uh, not performance uh, like Greek tragedy and so on was uh, more or less a, a big celebration with all these children from the primary school and it was quite funny but on the, on the other side this is the way of involving young generation just to, uh, to preserve actually and uh, increase their awareness on uh, the importance of that sites, of that places for them and for their future life. So the other one is Jiraz. Jiraz is quite famous. It's a Roman city. It's called Gerasa. It's also called the, uh, the Pompeii of the Middle East because it's very well preserved as a, as a city. And uh, uh, it was the focus of uh, all the, one of the focuses of the project because here it was developed and updated a real management plan. Uh, uh, complying with UNESCO standards. And the knowledge we, we reached, uh, the, the level of acquaintance we reached on, uh, on this site, on the theater here, has been really very, very important. Because uh, uh, when you have to deal also with simple things that are uh, services for tourists, uh, you know, booths for tickets and so on, if you have a precise idea of what is the, 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 the actual uh, configuration of the site, you, your, your, your work becomes much easier. Uh, otherwise, you, you plan to put something uh, into the site, and uh, as always happens, this turns to be uh, really something that's uh, uh, completely out of uh, any uh, conception on that. <clears throat> this is some of the images, the snapshots of the, of the point clouds, but these are 
only point clouds. So this is only the data capturing part. I would say these are, the, they are called raw data, uh, and raw data means that they are, they are raw. They need the selection interpretation to be useful, to be used. So what is the expertise you need? What is the skill you need to transform point clouds into something useful for archaeologists or uh, managers and so on? Uh, one of the means, of course, is extract information. And it's nothing but automatic. This is always relying on, on a subject, on someone, an individual, that goes there and draws, for example, or, or cuts the point cloud, or selects the reflectancy, I don't know, extracts data according to his idea, to his design. So uh, this is an example, of course. These are drawings that are uh, made out of the Merida site. And uh, it was in the project, uh, what we called it uh, the base cartography, that are the, the, the conventional drawings through which uh, architects, for example, uh, do their projects, our orthographic view, plan section, and so on. And we made the same. It was something that uh, uh, could appear a little uh, uh, trivial somehow, because, OK, what, what's the need? But these are basically the information that everybody needs to start the research, to start the intervention. And uh, in most cases, they do not exist uh, simply. So what was, what, this is uh, one of the most, uh, I think, significant, from my point of view, results uh, of our work. For example, this is Petra. And from the point clouds section, this is a snapshot of the section, and then the draw, the drawing, sorry. Again, Pedra, the other section. So very, something that appears to be very simple, but it's not very simple because when you pass from million points to a line, you just decide to, to draw that line and not another one. And again, on Jirash, more or less the same, the sections. These drawings are actually being used for the design of the management plan, for uh, uh, sketching on them the, uh, the criteria, for example, for management plans, for location of, of services, from, or, or, or the identification of areas for services of the management plan, and so on. So they are one of the main results, in our opinion, at least. You know, the, the point clouds can be very de detailed. Uh, of course, we, we use uh, not only scanning, but an integrated uh, series of techniques like orthophotography and photo modeling and photogrammetry and so on. I don't want to bother you too much. And so my, my department is a survey department, so we, it's our core business, I would say. And then what was the more uh, unexpected result, and it comes from uh, the same lunch in San Ramon, not from Ben, but there was there the, one of the manager of the GM, General Motors, and uh, he told me that they were using point clouds to uh, design intervention, intervention in their plants. Uh, they know they had to, to move, for example, an, ele an, electronic, an electric plug or uh, something of this kind of, of a pipe, I don't know. They do not uh, go on spot and take all the measurements and uh, take the pipes with them and try the pipes if they fit. They had all this process through a simulation with the, in, in that case, with the TrueView software from Leica, but there are many software now that, that make this. And uh, this uh, was for me an illumination somehow, because I, I thought this is one of the, of the means of the instruments we have to provide to the managers of sites. Because with a, in a simple way that is very interactive, very, uh, user friendly. Uh, everybody can navigate a point cloud. Ev everybody can take after half an hour measurements, for example, point to point. And 
it's freed somehow uh, by the uh, the weight of uh, processing of registration and so on. Somebody else has done all the job. He has only he's only an end user of this data, but. Uh, through that, uh, he can access uh, potentially very important uh, functions, like measuring, like uh, uh, measuring an area, distance, and so on. For example, here you see a, a funny simulation on the uh, on the Girash site that could just uh, uh, simulate the, the disposal of a stage, and so on. Thank you very much.